Are you ready to take your organization to the next level and become a game changer in your industry? Then look no further. Welcome to Yokai Business Show, where we bring you the world's top business thought leaders to share their secrets to success, from leadership development to finance, marketing, self-development, human resource management, and much, much more. Our guests reveal the strategies, tactics, and mindsets that have made them so successful. So let's dive in and learn from the best in the business. Hello, hello, and welcome back to another very special episode. I'm so excited that you have joined me here. And I know you've been listening for a long time because I can see from the uh, interaction in the community that uh, a lot of people keep coming back and wanting to learn more. And I know you're also uh, doing the same thing. And Bill, today we've got a great interview. And I know you were asking earlier on to cover uh, the mistakes And today, that's what we are going to be talking about, the mistakes that people uh, do. Sometimes they don't even know they're making mistakes in this area. But our expert today is going to reveal to you what those mistakes are and how you can avoid them uh, for certain. Now, before we bring our guests here today, I want to remind you of two things. Number one, our leadership training uh, mentor, Trevor Stoko, is around in the community. And if you see him active in there, ask him about leadership training that he has. He's got an incredible training program uh, that produced tremendous results for the business owners. So reach out to Trevor Stockwell in the community and find out more. And secondly, our podcast training. I know some of you want uh, to know how to start a podcast, how to scale a podcast, and how to monetize a podcast. Because, you know, uh, <laughs> we've been doing all these three, and we are doing it even at a larger scale today. So we created a program so that we can show you how to do that. So if you need that, uh, again, Again, go into the community where there is more information and we'll be able to help you. Now, that out of the way, <laughs> let's go and talk to our guests. Again, as we always do, we bring the very best of the best uh, you know, to come and help us because we know when we've got the best uh, uh, guest here, you're going to act on their knowledge and you're going to get results, which is what we are all about. And my guest is truly outstanding. And, uh, you know, we've been looking at uh, their background and what they do. And I think it will be right fit for us. There you have it. <laughs> now, uh, let's, you know, let's, let's start here. For those who are yet to discover you and what you do, could you please tell us a little bit about yourself uh, in terms of your background, your education, and your area of expertise uh, so that everybody in the uh, audience will know who you are. So I was the first in my family to graduate from college. I went to the University of Florida down here in uh, the great state of Florida, obviously. <laughs> and uh, basically, after that, I did 14 years in sales, corporate sales. I was a top performer in every single position that I did, global stack rankings, all of that. And for many of those years, I actually ran a it wasn't really a side hustle. It was a, a, just an entire other business um, with a partner of mine. And I was handling you know, just a lot of the things on the side when I wasn't doing my nine to five. So had to learn a lot with time management, especially as me and my wife started having kids. Life got busier. And then it just kind of got to the point to where I was faced with a choice. I had to either take a promotion. I was at the top of my game. It was time for me to move up the, the ranks in the corporate world or you know, shrug off the uh, corporate handcuffs. I was making a quarter million dollars a year. And I mean, I was going to be making anywhere from 350 to 500 with this promotion. And I just said, no, that's not what I want. Um, it didn't align with my why. And I quit and I started up my own company, uh, sold out of uh, my shares out of the other company that I was in and am now focused full time on the true wealth experience and helping others with financial wellness and lifestyle design. So uh, it's been a fascinating journey. And uh, one of the great things that I will say about my time in corporate was the fact that when I was doing uh, consulting with Gartner, I was able to work with some of the top minds 
in the world around strategic thinking. And then we were meeting with C-level executives of global 500 companies. And I'm just you know spending years getting a master class in leadership in being able to um you know strategize and kind of create plans on how to execute and achieve the desired results for a business and i took a lot of those principles and didn't just apply them to my business but i've applied them to my life as well and that has dramatically changed uh some of the results um uh in in how quickly i've been able to um you know, just attain some of my lifelong dreams. So it's been great. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I do want to say that I have three kids and a beautiful wife and uh, love them very much. Big family man. And uh, I think that's an important part of this journey as well. <laughs> Outstanding. Thank you for sharing that with everybody. Uh, we're just going to go straight in and uh, start talking about the mistakes. In your opinion, in this area, uh, you know, having done this for so long, uh, what is the number one mistake that uh, you find business owners make consistently uh, and oftentimes unaware that they are making the mistakes? Uh, and what should they do instead? I'll never forget going to this group, um, this business group one time, and uh, there were probably about 60 different owners there. And this was with my side hustle with uh, my co-owner, and we were considering uh, potentially joining it up as like a referral network. And we happened to go at the very beginning of the year. So this was the first meeting in January, and they're doing, uh, you know, just going around the circle, and all the business uh, owners are standing up, and they're saying what their goal is for the year for their business. And I was shocked because I had been working in corporate with global 500 companies for a long time with some of the greatest consulting minds. And there was one thing that just really stood out to me. And that was the fact that it was easily 50 to 60% of every single business owner that was in there. When they went to say what their goal was, they didn't actually give a goal. They gave a wish. Uh, they gave a range of things. They would say things like, "Yeah, you know, for you know, my business this year, I'm hoping to do anywhere from, you know, five hundred to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in revenue." Or, or, "Yeah, you know, we're hoping to do anywhere from, you know, uh, five to six million, uh, you know, this year." And oh, oh, yeah, you know, maybe you know, for this year, we'd like to we'd like to grow revenue by anywhere from twenty to thirty percent. It, and it's just. It was shocking to me because I'm like, that's not a that's not a plan. That's that's a dream. That's a wish. There's you can't you can't map out any kind of plan to that because when you go and you're looking at the data, you're looking at seasonality, you're looking at you know historical trends, and you're trying to project forward what it is you're going to accomplish with your business. It is completely different what you may need to do to get, you know, five million dollars in revenue to six million dollars in revenue. So the fact that you know, they didn't come in and have an exact target was really eye-opening for me and realized the fact that a lot of business owners think that they have a strategy, just be, but they, they don't have a strategy. They just have a general direction. They're like, yeah, we just want to head north. Well, nobody plans a road trip saying, I just want to head north. They say, I want to get to this location at this date, at this time, and this is how I'm going to map out my plan in order to get there. So I think that's one of the number one things that stands out to me, uh, both in people's, uh, you know, not just their businesses, but their personal lives. They just don't have a real plan and they either think they do and they don't, or they've just never done one to begin with. <laughs> yes, I can see how that would work. <laughs> I'm going to say I'm guilty of that. And I'm glad you are talking about this and uh, everybody's going to, to find a way. But the key thing, Bill, if you're listening, uh, is uh, once you discover that this is a mistake, is the corrective measure, what are you going to do about that? And this is uh, equally important. Let's dive in to talk about what is the mistake that most often causes business owners to fail completely <laughs> in this area? And of course, let's give an answer as to what they should be doing right now, uh, given uh, the information that we know now in light of the expertise uh, that you're sharing with us. So this has to do a lot with my answer previously saying the fact that the majority of business owners don't actually have a strategy, therefore they don't have a plan. And if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Well, what I would say is, you know, it's not so much not having the plan is what 
causes people to fail. Um, that's obviously, you know, the 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 beginning of it. But ultimately, what it comes down to is the fact that they become distracted. Uh, when you don't have it written down what you're going to do, especially if you're an entrepreneur, there's a lot of different ways to make money. No matter how you, um, no matter how it, what your product is or anything like that, there's normally a lot of different ways to make money with it. A lot of different ways to sell it. A lot of different things you can be doing that you think are revenue generating activities. Maybe they are. Maybe they aren't. Maybe they're uh, revenue generating activities, but they're not high value revenue generating activities are low value and it's not worth your time, Wh whatever the case may be. There's a lot of different things to it, but ultimately what it is, is it comes down to distractions. You are without a solid strategy and a plan that maps to that strategy. You are going to become distracted with low value tasks, low impact tasks that are going to eat up your precious time and energy and ultimately, it's going to prevent you from getting the results that you were shooting for. So you see it all the time. Distractions come up. A lot of times we we have this false sense of productivity. Oh, I, I just answered 50 emails today. I finally got my inbox back at zero. Okay. How many of those emails had anything to do with making money? How many of those emails had direct contribution to making your business run better and you know clearing up your margins and different things like that that is ultimately what causes business owners to fail uh, <laughs> my next question really is a tricky one uh, because i I'm, I'm sometimes guilt of it and and it is this what is uh the mistake that often business owners make where they think in their minds they're actually doing the right thing and don't realize it's a mistake in the first place. <laughs> and uh, what should they do instead? I think that new levels equals new devils uh, in this particular situation is the best way to say this because what ends up happening with a lot of business owners I find is that they may, maybe they were somebody who started the company and it was just them or one or two other people. And the skills and the role of what you do when there's, you know, just a few of you versus when you have 10 to 15 employees is completely different. Things that may have been a high, high value, high impact task for you when you had one to two people is not going to be the same when you have 15 to 20. It's not going to be the same when you have you know, a hundred employees, different things like that. So, you know, I think that adapting to um, the, the different level or stage of your business is something that a lot of business owners um, don't do. And, you know, they, they think that, hey, a perfect example would just be selling. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm out here pounding the phone, sending emails, doing all this other stuff. I'm a part of every deal. Um, yeah, that's, a, that's really important when it's just you and, you know, one or two other people. But then when you've got 20 employees, you shouldn't be on every phone call, every sales phone call. You shouldn't be on every deal. Maybe you're only on the top five to 10% of you know, the highest value deals that are coming in. And then the other portion of your time needs to be spent on things like operations, systems, culture, whatever the case may be. So generally just adapting to the different phases of business. Um, and maybe it's not even about employee size. Maybe it's about a new initiative that you have. And being able to delegate uh, certain aspects of your role where maybe you don't have strengths or it's just not worth your time anymore, I think is one of the biggest things that can enable business owners to make a mistake or, uh, or to become successful. And they just don't put a focus on it. And I think that's one of the biggest mistakes you can make when it comes to growing and scaling. Wow. <laughs> that certainly is an eye opener. And I'm glad that you touched on that for sure. Uh, let's talk about maybe go a little bit further. You know, are there any other major mistakes uh, that, you know, we need to let our community of business owners know about? I know, of course, you know, because of the constraints of time, we won't be able to go into greater details. We'll do that in the community, of course. Uh, but are there any major mistakes uh, that uh, you think and feel business owners need to know about right now in this area, of course. The last thing I would just say, sticking on this strategy thing, is that 
a lot of people build strategy and they don't think about the end first. You should always start with the end whenever you are building strategy. A lot of times they will look at their resources first. They'll see where they are. Uh, they'll try to get an understanding of what they did last year in the past. And then from there, they will try to project where they want to go, what they want to accomplish, how much they want to make for the upcoming year. And I think that's a massive mistake because that can put limiting beliefs on people. And I think that it's much better to start with a blank slate, realize it's a brand new year and really sit, you know, th sit down, do a little soul searching and say, what do I want to accomplish at the end of this year? I've got 365 days, you know, 300 business days, whatever it is, what are we going to do to get where it is I want to do? If I want to increase, you know, revenue by 25% this year, how are we going to do that? Start with that and then work your way backwards and figure it out. So that would be one of the things I say. I think a lot of business owners sell themselves short and they shoot themselves in the foot because they, without even knowing it, they place limiting beliefs on themselves by just looking at everything they've already done and where they are and then trying to project from there versus really sticking out a goal that scares them a little bit and then trying to figure out how to fill that gap along the way. Awesome, awesome. And as we're coming to the end of our time together here, is there anything else I've not asked you about in this area that you strongly feel uh, that uh, it will be appropriate to share and will be great for people to know about? Business owners are very busy people. You will not meet a lazy business owner. Um, and if you do, they're not going to be in business for very long. <laughs> but the thing that I think is really important that a lot of business owners need to understand is that they are spreading their energy way too thin. They're too distracted. They're doing too many things. And a lot of times they could accomplish a lot more by doing a lot less. And this really just comes down to eliminating distractions. Sometimes things that need to get done in your business, even though they need to get done, they're not high on the Eisenhower quadrant. Um, you know, the, the urgent important quadrant, it's not in that upper right, you know, urgent important thing. And it's, you know, not urgent, not important, but it still feels like it needs to be done then. And no, at the end of the day, that is just a distraction. Your phone, you need to be turning off notifications during certain aspects of the day to give you clarity and time to think and handle things. If you constantly have notifications popping up, you're being distracted and pulled in too many ways. And that's just going to lead to poor decisions. It's going to lead to burnout and it's going to be, uh, and it's going to lead to low impact activities when you could be focused on things that are really going to make, um, uh, your business accelerate forward a lot faster. So eliminating distractions in all its form is something that I think, uh, business owners really need to be aware of. Wow. Outstanding. Outstanding. A lot of great information there, a lot of things that we are discovering. Well, I want to say thank you so much for spending time with us here. What a great interview, a great conversation we've just had. And I never want to finish off without giving you an opportunity to share with everybody where people can find further information uh, or connect with you. Could you tell us uh, a little bit more about your website? or even your social media uh, so that we can connect with you there. My website is www.stephencorson.me and it is about financial wellness and lifestyle design and strategy. So one of the things that I help business owners do specifically with my design course is we help them get their money in order and then have a strategy for their life, which inevitably ties into what they're trying to accomplish with their business as well. Um, if you are a business owner who doesn't even have a budget for yourself, um, we have steps for you as well. You know, that's the thing about my website that's really important. The first course foundation, the level one course, is just to kind of stop the bleeding with your finances. The second one is uh, momentum, is to help you focus on making money. And then the third one, is the really advanced course, the lifestyle strategy, and building that out for you. And then, you know, like I said, if you're a business owner for your business as well, and we do masterminds and other things like that. But I think that um, it's really important 
for business owners, one of the biggest mistakes that they make is they'll worry about their business's finances, but then they don't take care of their own. And the reality is the stronger your financial foundation personally, the less stress it will place on you as CEO of your business. So it's incredibly important to be taking care of your castle at home so you can go out and conquer other lands. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. And if you want to know more, there are links below. And what a great conversation we've had here. And I know many of you will want to have follow-up questions uh, and want more answers and maybe uh, engage uh, you know, our guests' services. And the best place to be doing that is go and find out uh, in our community. So if you're not yet a, a member of our community, click the link below and you'll be taken directly uh, into uh, an area where you can create your own account. Download the app on your phone and you'll be able to talk to our guests directly and they will be coming back to you. They'll be able uh, to, to answer your questions straight away. Very easy and straightforward. Or if you have been a member of our community and haven't been in there for a long time, well, this may be the appropriate time to go back, re-engage and reconnect with other incredible members of our community in there. Uh, and uh, truly, this has been outstanding. Would you, uh, in a moment, uh, when I finish off, share with everybody how you will be helping people in the community uh, in the um, weeks and even months or even in years to come uh, as a result of this uh, uh, shortly. So once again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Until next time, as we always say here, never leave a place of discovering a new concept or discovering what you ought to do or what you ought not to do without scheduling a time when you're going to implement that. Because it's a proven fact that if you don't schedule it, it's not going to happen. Life is going to, to take over. So we want you to do that. And when you have scheduled it, uh, let everybody know in the community and we'll support you. We're cheering you on. Uh, and we truly believe in your goals. And when you are working on your goals, it makes me personally, you know, personally very, very happy because that's the reason why we do what we are doing. So go into the community and uh, do your very, very best. And again, access those leadership training, uh, podcast training, and everything else that we've got going in there. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, live well, live with passion, know that the best is truly, truly yet to come. Thank you for tuning in to your Kai Business Show. We hope you have enjoyed today's episode and have gained valuable insights and inspiration from our amazing guest. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review to help us spread the word. Also, be sure to check out our Leadership Outmade Success Mastermind program, which is designed to help you and leaders in our community to do great things and support each other along their leadership journey. Until next time, live well, live with passion, know that the best is truly yet to come.